Tepco USA is a subsidiary of a global manufacturer called ZK Teco. ZK Teco is actually one of the world's largest manufacturers of RFID and biometric solutions. Predominantly, ZK Teco started out as a time and attendance company. Then about uh, 13, 14 years ago at this point in, 19, in 2009, they started to branch off into access control and security. So we took everything we knew about RFID technology and biometric technology for the time and attendance market, and now we parlayed it into our security devices. So we have a very robust uh, product line. We can do things like access control panels and readers. We have video surveillance systems. We have visitor management software. We have turnstiles. We have metal detectors. We have x-ray machines. And we sell all that from our U.S. headquarters in Alfreda, Georgia. But you can see ZK Teco as a global manufacturer has a very robust global footprint. We have three manufacturing bases all over the world. We have 50 branch offices. We have uh, three a global research and development centers, and we've been used in over 100 countries. So this slide is really up here just to establish that, you know, we're not going anywhere. Sometimes people who have not heard of us may be a little trepidatious to use us because they think, okay, well, this company is going to go under in six months. I've never heard them before, of them before, and I'm going to be less I'm going to be left high and dry without support. But that's not the case with, with ZK Teco. So this is actually a picture of our U.S. headquarters in Alfreda, Georgia. It's about a half hour north of Atlanta. This is actually a, a new headquarters for us. We've been here about three years. Uh, this building has been completely renovated. And inside, we have this really cool experience center where we've already had a number of dealer days. And we've invited people uh, in the area to get some hands-on training on our devices. And then this slide here shows the large uh, devices that we have, like the turnstiles, the metal detectors, and the x-ray machines. This one? I know, I know, I just got my lunch though. And I'm just hearing some yeah, people in the background. Course. Guys, if you can just make sure you're muted. Um, I think I'm hearing Prada, if you just make sure that you're muted so that we don't have all that interruption. But then this slide here, it shows just sort of a nice cross section of what we sell from this office. So you can see our access control panel on the top left. We're actually going to be introducing an intercom solution very soon. We have standalone devices, including devices that can do temperature and mass detection. We have long range readers. We have our, our NVRs and our cameras. And then I've already mentioned what we call our entrance control line, which consists of turnstiles, metal detectors, and X-ray machines. So I know there might be a lot of people in this webinar who might be a little new to access control. So I just wanna have one kind of slide that really defines what an access control system is. So really the components are the of an access control system are one, essentially the credential, which is what defines what, what proves you are who you say you are. And these credentials can come in different forms. So we have a what you have credential, like a card or a fob that you would carry on you. And then there's a what you know credential, like a numeric PIN number. And then there's a what you are credential, like a biometric, which would be something like your face or your palm or a fingerprint. And we have all these types of credentials. And then the credential would be presented to what we call a credential reader. And just like a credential, the credential reader can come in different forms. So some credential readers might only accept cards or fobs. Some credential readers might only accept numeric PIN numbers. Some credential readers might only accept uh, biometric information like fingerprint. And then some credential readers might be a combination of all the above. And then the job of the credential reader is to take the information of the credential and bring it back to an access control panel. So you can see these are two types of our access control panels. One is a biometric panel that can hold uh, biometric data, and one is just a regular access control panel that can just hold card number or pin number data. But it's the access control panel that's really like the brains of the system. You can see that I also have pictures of locks by the access control panel, because it's really the access control panel that's going to make the decision as to whether or not to release the door lock or not. And then the entire system would be configured with software. And then depending on how sophisticated your access control system is, um, you can actually have different types of systems integrated with the access control system. So what we can do is we could take, let's say, an alarm panel or a fire alarm panel, and we can wire it into our access control panel. And then when the fire alarm goes off, you know, you can have all the doors release. So just something to keep in mind of. You can have it integrated even with your, you know, heating uh, and HVAC or your lighting system. So you can authenticate it at a door and then the lights turn on. It just depends on um, how you want to set up the system. So really what this presentation is going to focus on, though, is our small medium business line of access control. We call it the Atlas series. 
So this next slide here, this shows the panels for the Atlas series. They come in a one, two, and four door panel configuration. So you can control up to four doors with a single panel. And the Atlas series being our small, medium business line, there is a limit for how many panels you can have on a system. That limit is 21 panels. So if they were all four door panels, 21 times four would be 84 doors that you could potentially be controlling with the Atlas system. But there's really two uh, very big selling points of an Atlas panel. One, the interface or the software that you would use to configure the system is actually embedded on the panel itself. So it's not traditional software that you'd have to download and uh, live on a server and then link the panels to. If you have the Atlas panel, you automatically have the interface because all you would do is put the panel on the network and then from any other computer on the network, you would open up a browser, type in the IP address of the panel, and then the interface will pop up and you would start to make your configurations. And I'm gonna do a demo of that a little bit later. So that's one very big selling point of the Atlas line. It saves a lot in configuration because now you're not downloading external software. And then also another very big selling point of the Atlas line <clears throat> is that all the panels have built-in PoE and built-in Wi-Fi. So you can power the panel and provide communication with the interface with your ethernet cable. So if you didn't want to use the ethernet cable, um, you can actually throw the panel up on the Wi-Fi network, and then you would just power the panel traditionally with a traditional power supply, and you wouldn't need an ethernet cable. So you either need an ethernet cable or a traditional power supply, but not necessarily both. And then I'll talk about this a little bit later, but there's also a very feature rich mobile app that you can use with the system. One of the nice things about Atlas is that you actually get one free instance of an administrative app where from your phone, you can do all the major features that you'd wanna do from the interface, but now from your phone. So you would wire any of our credential readers to the Atlas panels, and we have a variety of different types of credential readers, and you can also wire third-party credential readers to the panels as well. Atlas is actually the second panel in the access control market to be OSDP certified. So if you guys are familiar with the Wiegand protocol, it's been an access control standard as a communication protocol between the reader and the panel. The new protocol is OSDP or Open Supervised Device Protocol. And again, Atlas is only the second panel to be OSDP certified. But these readers that you see on the screen here, these are traditional Wiegand readers. We have HID compatible Wiegand readers. HID is a very large player in the access control space, and we can make credential readers that read their uh, their bit format. So we have Moolean mount readers, we have single gang readers, and then we have readers with a keypad. So you can set up dual factor authentication or either or authentication. And then the readers that you see on the right, these are our regular ZK Teco credential readers that read our regular ZK Teco credentials. And again, the idea is the same. We have a Moolean mount, a single gang, and a single gang with a keypad. We also have these really cool Bluetooth readers. So now obviously with Bluetooth technology, People don't want to carry around extra things. They don't necessarily want to carry around another card or another fob. You can actually just use your phone to authenticate yourself. So that's the big benefit of using these readers is now you don't have to carry around an extra device. Everything is just basically done from your phone where your phone is going to be your access control credential. So you can actually just keep your phone in your pocket with these readers and wave your hand <clears throat> across the reader itself. And that's how it would uh, grant you access. <clears throat> And then this is really cool. We have these QR code readers. So from the Atlas interface, and I can do a demonstration of this, we can generate a QR code, and then there would be a free app that you can download onto your phone, and you would load the QR code into this app. And the big benefit of using QR code is it doesn't cost anything to generate a QR code. So basically, you're essentially making credentials like cards or fobs for free. They would just be in QR code form. So this app that you see on the screen here, this is a free app that you would uh, allow end users to, to download onto their phone. And when you are using the Bluetooth credential or the QR code credential, you would also have to use them in conjunction with this Z key app. And this is just an app that houses the Bluetooth or the QR code credential. Again, this is only for um, end users that just need to authenticate themselves. This is different from the administrative app that I mentioned earlier, where you can actually manage the system and open doors and um, delete users and manage users and check reports and things like that. This is purely for people who just want access to their doors. And then our newest line of credential reader are these what we call the EP readers. And the big benefit of using these EP readers is that they can read a whole bunch of different bit formats. So let's just say you're taking a system over that already have an existing access control system, but you wanna do an expansion and you can't find the particular readers that were already installed on site, you can use these EP readers and there's a really, really good chance that these EP readers 
uh, can read existing credentials for a system. So they can also read uh, Bluetooth credentials. So you can use Bluetooth with the system. They can also do QR code. And we have versions of it that can do keypad as well. So you can see this slide here. These are all the different bit formats that these readers can can recognize. So again, if you are taking over an existing system and you can't find the readers that are already being used in that system and you need to expand, if you use these EP readers, there's a really good chance that whatever credentials your customer is already using can be read by these readers. And then because we are also a biometric access control company, uh, we have fingerprint authentication readers. So the reader that you see on the left here, it's called our FR1500 AID, A is for Atlas. And this is a dual factor reader where you can authenticate via your fingerprint, or you can also present a card or a fob up to this reader. So you can set up dual factor authentication where a user will have to present both, or you can set up either or authentication where they can present one or the other. And this is also a good solution for anybody who maybe wants to use biometrics, but are concerned that a particular person might not have a good fingerprint read because it is dependent on the quality of the fingerprint read. You know, now you could just present a card or a fob to this reader just like normal. So you're not really slowing anything down. And you don't need any extra hardware. And then the device that you see on the right, this is our fingerprint enrollment reader. So you'll see in the interface, but as you are enrolling somebody into the system, in order to enroll their fingerprint and associate their fingerprint with their profile, you would need this fingerprint enrollment reader. It's a very simple device. It just connects via USB to the computer. And then in a user's profile, you would enroll their fingerprint to their profile and grant them access just like you would a card. And this slide here, this is the administrative app that I was talking about before. So with the Atlas system, you get one free instance of this administrative app. And there are not many licenses associated with the Atlas line. There are no door licenses, so it doesn't matter how large the system grows. As long as you don't go above that 21 panel threshold, uh, it doesn't cost anything to add more doors. But if you do want to use this administrative app, you get one free instance of it per Atlas project, and then you would buy a nine pack. So up to 10 people can have this administrative app so they can add and delete new users. They can open and close doors. They can initiate a lockdown they can clear a lockdown and they can check reports. So you can also have a restricted login for this app. So somebody can be a master administrator and do everything, but maybe some people can just open and close doors or maybe some people can just add and delete new users. You can restrict this app as well. And also very recently, we introduced video integration with the Atlas line. So if um, if your customer has, let's say, the Hanwha WiseNet Wave system or the Digital Watchdog Spectrum video management software, we can integrate the Atlas access control system with these two video management softwares. And basically how it works is you would associate a camera with a door, and then any event that happens at that door in the reports of the Atlas system, you could see the corresponding video clip. So if somebody, let's say, forces open a door and you want to see, well, hey, who forced open that door? You, in the reports, you would see a little camera icon. You would just click on the camera icon and it'll show you a 20 second clip, 10 seconds before the event and then 10 seconds after the event. So yeah, we're really excited about having this video integration. It was something that we kind of needed for a while and now we haven't, it's been very popular. So this slide here is basically how we sell the panels. So the columns are the one, two, and four door panels. So the first column are just you know single door panels. The second column is two door panels. And the third column is four door panels. And then the rows are the different part numbers of how we sell them. So you can buy just the panel. So usually when you do buy our system, you would want a panel in a metal enclosure and a power supply. But if for whatever reason, a panel goes down, maybe it gets struck by lightning, maybe somebody hits it really hard with a hammer, but you can buy just the panel and just swap the panel out of an existing enclosure. But usually when you buy our system, you would want to use a part number for what we call a bundle. So that's the panel in the metal enclosure with a power supply. And then because Atlas is our small medium business line and projects can be very similar in nature, we actually developed a single part number that basically gives you all the accessories that you would need minus the locking hardware. So we call that a kit. So you can buy a one door kit, a two door kit or a four door kit. And it would come with you know, the one, two, or four door panel, the metal enclosure, the power supply, and then one, two, or four credential readers, one, two, or four request to exit buttons. And then depending on the type of kit that you can purchase, which I'll show you in the next slides, there might be like a fingerprint enrollment reader that you would also need if you were buying the biometric version of the kit. So you can see here, these are different kits that we offer. So we sell a Bluetooth kit with Bluetooth readers. We sell a QR code kit with QR code readers. And then we also sell the biometric kit with the biometric readers. And you also notice that the biometric kit also includes the fingerprint enrollment reader because that is a required accessory to enroll fingerprints into the system. Jill, we have a um, 
question in the chat? Yeah, so this is actually a good place to stop and ask for <clears> questions. <throat> I'm about to show you a demo of the Atlas interface, but yeah, let's pause right now and, and, and let's uh, answer some questions. Okay, so Andrew says, can a one door panel expand to a four or can it only support one door ever? Well, a one door panel has only one lock output. So it's not necessarily that it can't expand, but the panel itself can't expand. You would just have to add another panel to it if you want to add more doors to the system. So oftentimes, you know, if you have like a one door project or a two door project, but you think more doors might be added in the future, you might just want to start with a four door panel. And this way you don't have to buy any more hardware or at least you don't have to buy another panel down the line. Sounds good. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Um, any other question, guys? Because now's a good um, a good spot to kind of pause and, and ask a few questions. But if not, yeah, we can go on to the uh, interface. And I think maybe you guys might have a few more questions once I talk about the interface. Oh, I'm seeing another question come in. So for the mobile app. Can any of your readers read Indala cards or FOBs? So actually, Indala is one of the very few manufacturers that those EP readers that can read a number of different types of bit formats cannot read. So yeah, you'd want to make sure that you're using Indala readers with Indala credentials. So for the mobile app, how is it one per project, but up to nine? So with the Atlas system, <clears throat> You get one free instance of the mobile app, and you'll see I can do a demo of it when we showcase the interface, but there's a place in the interface for the Atlas system where you would basically create an instance of the mobile app and link it to the actual mobile app onto your phone. You're only allowed to do that once in the Atlas interface, but if you buy a license from us, we can expand that to have nine additional instances, and then you know nine plus the one is 10. So we have another question, Joe, from yep. Matt. If you have four doors within, with in, with, in, oh, within and, in out. and out readers, yeah, <laughs> in, in needed, will a four door model work? So yes and no. Um, for the Atlas system, a one door panel has two Wigan reader ports, so you can have two Wigan readers on a one door panel, and you can set up in and out. On a two door panel, there are four Wigan reader ports, so you can set up in and out on a two door panel with Wigan readers. On a four door panel, though, there are only still four Wigan reader ports, so you can't do in and out with Wigan readers on a four door panel. But what you can do is you can also wire OSDP readers to a four door panel, and you can have four readers be Wigan and four readers be OSDP. And yeah, we can set up technically in and out on a four door panel, but I always try to advise if if you do have a system that's going to have in and out, you basically want to use the same model of reader. So it'd be better to use a one door or a two door panel. We have another question from David. Is this a plug and play type? Well, yes and no. I mean, the interface is embedded on the panel itself. So once the panel has power and it's added to the network, um, yeah, you can go to any browser on the network and start to make your configurations. You know, obviously you'd have to wire readers to it and you might want to set up your configurations in terms of rules of who has access to what doors and when, but is that what you mean exactly by, is, is that what you mean by plug and play? Okay. Yeah. For the software, can you purchase single license or only the 10 pack? So you might be confusing our two distinct access control lines. So Atlas is our small medium business line. There are no door licenses for the Atlas line. You know, you can go up to 21 panels and however many doors you want to control within those 21 panels. For our enterprise love line, which is entirely separate, which I really don't want to spend too much time on, but yeah, we it is external software that is only activated via a license and you would have to buy like a, a 10 door license as the smallest increment for the enterprise love line, not for Atlas. How do you find it once connected to the network? So all the panels have a default IP scheme. Actually, let me put that IP scheme in the chat here, 169-254-202-242. So you'd have to make sure the first time you remote into a panel, your computer has to have this network scheme, and then you can change it to whatever you want, and you can um, you know, set your IP address, and then any other computer on the network can remote into it. It might make more sense too, Joe, when we show yeah, once the we software. Do the demonstration. When we just show the software demo. Absolutely. Well, I'll just see if any we have any questions come in. Let's just of see. Of course. If... All right, but yeah, you know what? Let's do that. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to open up a new browser window. Here we go, Joe. Sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. Is the Atlas line better suited for a single location or uh, can you do satellite locations? Well, you can do satellite locations with Atlas. The only thing to keep in mind is you would have to open up a port. So the default port of the panel is 443 and you have to make sure that at the satellite locations that port is open so that it can talk over the internet to the primary location. We are very shortly going to release a true cloud solution for Atlas where integrators will actually have a dealer portal and you can actually manage multiple locations uh, without the need to open ports. So for that, there would be a recurring fee. Okay, but you should be able to see my um, a new browser window open. So really what I'm gonna do is I have a panel at my desk here. I'm just gonna type in the IP scheme of this panel, and then the interface is gonna pop up here. And I'm gonna log in with my username and password. Okay, so the default username and password is admin admin, but it does make you change the password the first time you log in. So I'm gonna put in my, my new password. And this is what the, uh, the browser interface looks like. So on the dashboard here, it gives you some statistics and analytics. It tells you if your controllers are online, tells you if your doors are online, tells you when your next database is, when your next database backup is gonna be. And if you have any threats or warnings, they'll show up here on the right. And then this table at the bottom, this is real-time monitoring. So as transactions happen in the system, you'll see them You'll see them pop up here, and you can see the most recent transaction that happened was me just signing into the system. So I'm just gonna go through a basic Atlas configuration, and really there's three steps, and I like to have a notepad open uh, as I do this. So the three basic steps of an Atlas configuration, and let's make this a little bit bigger, is one, we're gonna wanna first create schedules, which are gonna define uh, when people have access to their doors and then we're going to create access levels which define which doors they have access to and then we're going to enroll users but i'm seeing a question here once you install it and connect to a customer's network is there a way to find its ip address well you would assign the ip address to the panel but we also have a search tool that yeah if you want to contact us or you can use even an ip search tool that you can find online but yeah it should show you what the ip address of the panel is but you would wanna you know, set it as a static IP address. There is an option to do a dynamic IP address. You don't wanna necessarily use a dynamic IP address for the primary panel, but it's okay to have dynamic IP addresses for the secondary panels. And we can talk about what a primary and a secondary panel is in a little bit. But these are the three basic steps of an Atlas configuration. So we'll create our schedules and define when people have access to their doors. We'll create our access levels and define which doors they have access to, and then we'll enroll users. So for the first step, we're gonna come over here to access and schedules, and then I'm gonna click create at the top. And first we would name our schedule. So I always recommend naming the schedule, the hours it's gonna control, cause it's a lot easier to keep things organized that way. So I'm gonna say, you know, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And let's say M-F from Monday through Friday, make this a little bit bigger. And now to actually make the schedule, I'm gonna click add on the right. And first I'm gonna define my hours and then I'm gonna define my days. So I'm gonna come over here, I'll say 09 for 9 a.m. Then I'll come over here, I'll say 17 for 5 p.m. because it does operate on like a 24 hour military clock. And now I'll choose which days I want these hours to kick in for. So I'll just choose the weekdays or what I can do is I can just choose the weekdays button. And let's just say I wanna give people access doors on the weekends as well, but I want it at different times on the weekends. I can click add here and I can set define different times here. So I'll just use the slider and define different hours. And then I'll choose this for Saturday and Sunday. So now on the weekdays, you know, they may have access nine to five. On the weekend, you might want to restrict your access. I just wanted to show you we had the ability to do that. I didn't actually want to create the schedule, so I'm going to uh, remove this. But now we can save this schedule and then in the next step, we're gonna implement it when we create access levels. So now we're on step two, is we're gonna create an access level. So again, I'm gonna come over here to access. I'm gonna come over here to access levels. I'm gonna click create again. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna create, let's say an all access access level, because usually every project has that access level where people are gonna have access to all the doors 24 seven. So I'm gonna call this all access. 
And then I'm going to define which doors are going to be part of this all access access level. So I just have a single door panel at my desk here. So I'm a little limited to the number of doors that I can add to this access level. So I'm just going to put the front door be part of the access level. But you can see here there's a default 24 7 schedule. I didn't have to create that. So I want to associate the 24 7 schedule with the all access access level. So I'll save this, but now I want to make another access level that's a little bit more restrictive. So I'm going to click create. And I'm going to name my access level something. Let's just call this one like an employee access level. And again, I just have a one door system, so I'll give them access to the front door. But rather than give them 24 7 access, I'm going to use that nine to five schedule that I just created before. Now we can save this. And now we can start to add users, and we would associate the users either with the all access access level or the employee access level. And that will then dictate you know, when they have access to the front door. So now we're up to step three. I'm going to come over here to access. I'm going to come over here to users. There is a default administrative profile that comes with the system. So you can edit this profile, but you cannot delete it. But I'm going to add a new user. So I'm going to come over here and click Create. And then this is the form that we would fill out to enroll somebody new in the interface. So first and last name are required. So sometimes what we've seen dealers do is they can just um, if they want to enroll cards in the system, but they don't know who's exactly going to get those cards for the first name, you could just do like user. And then for the last name, you can do one and then the next person can be user two and so on and so on. But you do have to put in first last name in the system. So, you know, I'm going to put in Homer and let's say Simpson here. And now what we can do is we can associate a profile or we can associate a headshot with the profile. So if I, you don't necessarily have to do this, but I have a picture of Homer here. So now I'm making a profile for Homer. If I want to, I can give Homer a personnel ID number. This is searchable within the system. So if I don't want to search by his name, I might have a lot of Homer system, Homer Simpsons in the, in the system. <clears throat> I can give him a unique ID number and just search by that. So we'll just make him number one. And there's a lot of settings that we can do in a user's profile. I want to keep this as basic as possible, but if we wanted to, we can set his credentials to expire. So at a certain date, his cards won't work anymore, but I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to come over here to the cards table. And now we can associate a card with Homer. This is how we issue him his card. So I'm going to come over here to add. I'm going to make sure my type is standard and I would just type in the number that appears on our cards and fobs. So whatever the number is, we also have a USB device where we can just scan the card or fob and it'll populate this field for you. But there's also a different type of credential that I can give to Homer from this table. So if I were to click add again, and rather than use standard, I can use QR code and I'd put in any four digit uh, number in this field, I can save this profile and then I can uh, share this QR credential. So you can see now the share button comes up. And if Homer had the Z key app that I mentioned before in the PowerPoint, he can scan this QR code into that app and that's how to load a QR code onto his phone. And again, it doesn't cost any money to do this. So you can make as many of these as you want. The system can hold 5,000 credentials. Um, and that's how you would associate a QR code with the user. So I can come over here to enroll fingerprints and then I would use that uh, SLK 20R fingerprint enrollment reader. It's a USB uh, enrollment reader. I actually don't wanna ha have one at my desk at the moment, but I would just choose what finger I'd want to enroll in the system. I would place my fingerprint on that enrollment reader three times and that's how I would enroll my fingerprint to the profile. And then if I had, let's say, a keypad reader, I can give Homer a, a numeric number that he can punch in rather than present a card or a fob or a QR code or use his fingerprint. So now we can come over here to access levels and we can click add and we can assign Homer the all access access level, which will give him 24 seven access, or we can grant him the employee access level, which will only give him nine to five access on the weekdays. So I'm gonna give him the employee access level. Door access is another way of making an access level on the fly. So let's just say I had a 10 door system, but I only have an access level controlling doors one through five. If I wanted to, I can come over here and I can on the fly choose door 10 and give Homer access to door 10. But you know, you can either choose to make a formal access level or you can make these access levels on the fly with the door access table. But anyway, we can save this profile now and we can come back to the home screen. And now in this real-time monitoring at the bottom, I'm gonna use my keypad reader that I have here and I'm just gonna type in the password that I put in for Homer. And now you can see uh, the transaction comes up. It was an access granted because Homer has the right um, 
the right to go into this door at, at this time. And if you also notice, you can see that the camera icon shows up in this column here. So I actually don't have a camera set up just yet, but if we were to click this camera icon, then a new window would pop up with the clip of the of the transaction. So again, it would be 10 seconds before the event and then 10 seconds after the event. So if let's say it wasn't a normal, it wasn't an access granted event, let's say it was a door forced open and you wanna say, hey, well, who just forced the door open? We just click on this camera icon and it'll show us this event happening. So I wanna pause here and just kind of ask, or I wanna pause here and just kind of answer some more of these questions. Um, I think that Andrew answered his own question. He said, how many characters for the personal ID? But then he said, strike that. As long as we can search with mobile or email, that's all I was after. Okay, yeah. I mean, if we come over here to users and we open up this filter, this is how um, we can search. And yeah, we can search with mobile number or, or email. We would just want to put that in these custom fields. But you know, if you did want to put, let's say, a personal ID, then we could just search with the personal ID. Batch upload, let's say 200 HID cards. So yeah, we can do a batch upload, not necessarily where if you have sequential cards, we do a batch upload from the interface, but what we can do is we can do an import from like an Excel file. So you can see on this import button, we can download an import template and I can open that up here. And you just want to make sure that you populate these columns and then we can just upload this to the interface. And what's also nice about this is that access level is one of the columns. So you can even assign an access level via this import. Just the access level has to be created beforehand within the interface. Joe, the Ricardo, max number of, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Ricardo asks, what is the maximum number of users and credentials? So the panels can hold 5,000 credentials. So you just want to be mindful. You can assign multiple credentials to a user, but you don't want to pass that 5,000 threshold. So you could, in theory, have one person have 5,000 cards, but then you won't be able to upload anybody else. So you just want to make sure you don't go past the 5,000 credentials. So video capture is from a paired camera or one integrated with a read. So yeah, video capture is from a paired camera. So once you have the license for the video integration with Hanwha or Digital Watchdog, you would come over here to config, you'd come over here to video system. We would tell the Atlas interface where the software, where the Hanwha software, the Digital Watchdog software is. So you can see this is the IP address of my computer with the port number of that um, software. But then you would come over here to config and cameras and you would associate a camera with a door. And then any event that happens at that door, it's not on a what the event is, it's just any event at that door, you'll see that camera icon. So I want to talk a little bit about the, the mobile app. Um, that I mentioned before. So if you remember, there's one free instance of the mobile app per Atlas project. So if we were to come over here to admin and authorize mobile devices, you can see I have my profile set up here. So what you would do is you would make a profile, you know, you would scan this QR code into the app. But if I were to try to, let's say, create a new profile, I can say Kathy here, but the system's not going to let me save, the system's not going to let me save this one because I've already used my one free instance. So if I cancel this out and I delete my Joe profile, now I can create a Kathy profile. So it is transferable. So you can, you know, test it out yourself and then give it to somebody. So now I can test it out. I can delete my profile. Now I can give it to Kathy. And then you have that nine pack where you can have 10 licenses or you can make 10 profiles for the mobile devices within the interface. Okay, so one more thing I, I mentioned briefly in, in the presentation, but I want to just mention it again. Very shortly, we are going to have a true cloud solution for the Atlas line. So now as an integrator, you're going to have your portal that you can log into and you can manage multiple sites. And you can also restrict a login to that portal so that because you know, you're going to be charged RMR or recurring revenue for this cloud solution, and you're going to charge your customer a recurring revenue for this cloud solution, the big benefit now of the customer is that they can also log in just to their system and manage just their system from anywhere. 
So even though the customer is being charged a recurring fee, they also get the benefit of the cloud. Okay, well, if there's no more questions, that's really all I had planned for this presentation. I just wanna put in the chat what my email address is. So if you guys ever wanna set up a more in-depth webinar, or if you want a, a parts list, or you just have general questions that come to you a little later, you know, you can always send me an email. We can basically just let me know how I can help you out. Joe, there is one more question. Oh, one. Yep. Um, I'm sure this is coming. The IP log in is for a single panel or all panels in the case of more than four doors? Oh, so I, I think this question is referring to how to link secondary panels within the system so yeah with the atlas panels because the interface is embedded on each panel individually if you do have a multi-panel project one panel is designated as the primary and then all the other panels are designated as what we call secondaries and then you have to link the secondaries to the primary and this is possible because they're all on the same network so if i were to come over here to config and hardware and I come over here to discover controllers, you can see it's gonna find uh, other controllers that we have here in our office. So actually it's just finding one, it's actually on my colleague's desk, but now I can link this secondary panel to my primary panel and I would set up everything as one giant system. So if you remember before, when I made access levels, I could only associate one door with the access level because I just have a one door panel at my desk. But if I were to add this panel, to my system, then I would be able to associate all the doors in, in an access level. So does that answer your question? I'm not, I'm not sure if that does. Well, how does Bluetooth credentials work with Atlas? So you know what, let me bring up the slide for the Bluetooth credentials again. So when you have, let's say these readers here, uh, basically, there's a portal that you would log into where you would activate the credential and then you would scan the, the Bluetooth credential into this Zkey app. And then in the Atlas interface, there is uh, a number associated with the Bluetooth credential. So it's basically just like enrolling a card into a profile. You're just enrolling a virtual number into a profile. It's, it's done the same way. But then when that phone is then presented to the reader, that number shows up and then the system knows what to do if you have access to that door at that time. Joe, we have a couple of more questions. Yeah, do you mind um, reading Any them distance limitations from panel to doors or just ethernet limitations was from well, Andrew. Um, if you're using, you know, regular Wigan readers, generally people say 400 feet is the, the Wigan limit. Uh, we kind of recommend 300 feet. There are Wigan boosters that you can buy, but yeah, 300 to 400 feet is basically the limit for Wigan readers. OSDP readers can actually be a little bit longer. Uh, I think it's something like 500 feet. And then Ethernet connection from the panel to the network is also around 300 feet. We have another question. With the app, can I control the board from anywhere? Um, well, yeah, so you would have to, if you're not using our cloud solution, if you're just using a normal Atlas panel, the phone would have to, just like a computer, would have to be on the same network as the panel. So you would have to utilize port forwarding if you wanted to use the app from out of network. So let me just show you this. In the interface, it's very easy to set the port of an Atlas panel. If we come over here to admin and web server settings, you can see the default port is 443. You would have to forward this, but you know we can change this very easily. That's why if you have multiple panels and they all need to be forward from one location, they obviously all can't be on the same port. So you just change all, all the panels to different web server ports. PoE plus powered four door controller could power four mags. So no, the, the locks you would want to power separately. The, the lock outputs on the Atlas panel, they are dry contacts. So mag locks, electric strikes, you would just want to make sure you're powering those separately. Well, that's a lot of good stuff, Joe. A lot of good information we heard today. Um, we probably have a few more minutes. Do you want to just uh, wait a few more minutes to see if anybody has a few more questions? 
So is there a charge for the Bluetooth credentials? Yeah, here's another one. So yeah, the Bluetooth credentials, it's just like purchasing a card, which is why that we're really trying to push kind of QR code, because now with QR code, you saw I could just generate a QR code, doesn't cost anything. I've actually did a project with the homeowners association. They're like, oh, this is great. We can charge our customers for the QR code credential, but we're not charged anything. So, so that's why we're kind of pushing the QR code. But yeah, if you want to use Bluetooth, you would have to purchase the virtual credentials just like you would cards. From Banner Solutions. Yeah, from Banner Solutions, of course. Mm -hmm. So the phone app for admin, does anyone have to be on site or does it work from anywhere, says Laura? Well, if the phone is on the same network as the panel, it will work. So if you are using the same, let's say, Wi-Fi that the panel's on, then yeah, the, the phone will work. If you want to use it from out of network, then you would have to utilize port forwarding. Is there Andrew, a per end? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there yeah, a per, per end per user end. cost or software subscription? So for the version of Atlas that I'm demonstrating right now, this is our basic model that just lives on your network. So there wouldn't be any recurring fee from us or to us. If you did want to utilize, let's say, port forwarding and set up a public IP address, your internet provider uh, will charge you a recurring fee for that. But then when we have our true cloud solution, it's going to be called Atlas 360 there's going to be a recurring fee for that because that is a true cloud that we would be hosting for you. Oh, Joe, we've got a lot of questions now. Yes. Wow. Um, so what is port forwarding? Um, someone asked another one, Laura asked that same question. And then um, Ken asked a QR code screenshot and text to someone, or is there a way to limit that? So I don't know which one you want to take first. Well, port forwarding, that's it's more of a networking question than strictly an access control question. But basically, it's a way to allow devices on your network to talk out to the internet. So yeah, it's something that I can't really go too in depth right here. But basically, you would set it up with your internet provider. And this way, any IP-based device that you have you know, on your network can then talk out to the internet. So in terms of QR code, so can you just make a, a screenshot of the QR code and send it to someone? So no, we do have a way to combat that. So if I were to come over here back to users and come on, let's come over back to the Homer profile. So this QR code right here, this is not the QR code that Homer's actually gonna present at the reader. This is just a way to load that QR code onto his phone. But the thing is when you do load a QR code onto the phone, it needs to be refreshed. So there's a little, um, button at the bottom of the app where you would refresh the QR code. And basically what the QR code is, it's a timestamp. So the system knows if that QR code has been used. And that way we can prevent uh, taking a screenshot and sharing it with somebody else. So this the same given QR code cannot be used more than once. And it's not like you have to change anything in Homer's profile here. It all happens within the app. So there, there's a way that we've combated against just taking a screenshot of the QR code and sending it to someone. That's great stuff. Do we have any more questions? And Joe is also available um, here. Joe, I don't know if you want to share your calendarly information or calendar information. Um, you know, yeah, on this that's chat. That's a good but, idea. Let's let's do that. You can you can also um, set up a, an individual class with Joe via webinar. So Laura yeah, so has another So if you ever question. want to go a little more in depth on the system, I'm going to put in a link to my what's called Calendly. This way you can designate like an hour webinar in my calendar. I always say it wrong. I always want to put an R in there, Calendly. Okay, uh, Laura says, when will 360 come out and what will it cost? It will come out very soon, I've been told. <laughs> it's going to be $249 just to have a 360 account and that's yearly and then $199 a year per primary panel and then $99 per secondary panel. Andrew asks, does CK Techo have a standalone single door solution, like for an apartment or an office door, for example? Yeah, so also very shortly, we're going to have our intercom solution. So let's come back to my PowerPoint here. I only touched on it very briefly in the presentation. Uh, let's, can I get advance these slides? Where's my mouse? Anyway, 
let's do this. If you see this next slide here, it's a little hard to see. I don't know why this isn't. Let's do that. Here we go. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so if you see the second, now oh, I want to go forward. Okay, if you see the second item on the screen here, where it just says intercom, so this is our new Aura 12 device. So basically, it's basically just like a doorbell for every apartment in a complex. And then there would be an app that the residents of that apartment will have. You'll be able to see the person who's at the door. It's two-way audio communication, but obviously just one-way video so that you know only the people in the apartment can see the person at the door and then they can unlock the door. So that is gonna be our intercom solution very shortly. Joe, Mark says to use a QR code, you need to download the app on your phone. Well, yeah, there's a yeah, there's a free app that you would download from the App Store, the Google Play Store. It's called the Zeki app. And let's see if I can get back to it here. So this app right here, this is the app that houses the QR code credential, or incidentally, if you use it with our Bluetooth readers, it can house the Bluetooth credentials, but it's a free app. And then you scan that QR code that was from the Homer profile into it, and then it'll load this QR code onto the app. And then it's this app that refreshes. So you can see at the bottom here where it says generate new QR code, it it the QR code actually changes after every use. So this way you can't just take a screenshot and send it to someone. So Andrew says, um, but for their individual door or would it have to be set up with a reader and an electrified hinge? Well, I'm not exactly sure, but for their individual door, are you referring to the, the intercom product? And Andrew, if you want me to open your mic, you can just raise your hand if that's easier. Yeah, well, in conjunction with this intercom product, there is a very small panel that the intercom reader triggers the panel and then the panel would trigger the door lock just like uh, an access control panel would. So yeah, you would have to use like an electrified strike or a mag lock or something to that effect. Okay, so we've got a couple of resources. Um, Brenton's got a got an email for quotes. Uh, Joe put in his calendar. Um, if you need any uh, any in depth information, yeah. So if you guys ever want to just set up an hour in my calendar, and we can go a little bit more in depth, or if you have other questions, you can use this Calendly link, and it'll set up an hour in my calendar that you can use. Hey, Joe. So, yeah. Did you mention the uh, demo um, site? Uh, well, no, I didn't mention it. So we do have a public login that I guess we I all put in the chat where if you ever want to just demo the interface um, and just play around with it. Yeah, there's just an interface that we can that we've made public so that you can, you can log in and play around with the system. So, so I did see there was a question. Yeah, yeah Ken, Ken asked in your camera line, can I assume those are integrated into access control like DW? Well, for the Atlas system, the brand of cameras that you use in conjunction with the Atlas interface, it, it doesn't really matter that the cameras just need to be on Viv compliant. The Atlas system only integrates with the Hanwha Wave video management software or the digital watchdog spectrum video management software. So the, the brand of model of cameras doesn't matter so much as long as they're on VIV compliant. So Andrew asks, so I, uh, so I will still need to wire access control for an apartment door. I see how this works for the common doors, but what about the personal residence? Well, for, yeah, this intercom would be for the common door, like the lobby door, right? Because it, you know, you're just ringing the bell of whichever apartment you want to go to. They'll let you through the lobby door. In terms of the individual apartment door, no, I mean that's not a solution specifically for that. No. 
Yeah, they would. It, it would be just like it is now. So you would see, um, you know, your phone, your personal phone would ring and then you'll be able to see who it is. Yeah, but just to the lobby door, right? Right, right. Just to wherever they're calling from. Mm hmm. All right. Anybody else? Yeah, this was good. It's a lot of good oh, feedback. Really great. Lots of great questions. Thank you, Hopefully everybody. You guys got something from it. So yeah, thanks for your time. Thanks, Spanish Solutions, for for hosting this. Just let us know how we can help you out. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. And we will follow up with a link to the recording. So thank right. you, Joe. Thank you, Kathy. Sure. Thank you, everybody. Let us know if you have any questions. Okay. Great. Thanks, Thank guys. you. Take care. Bye. Thanks, guys.